Hi guys, it's Jake at Canadian Cutting Edge and there's a knife that I decided a while back, well about a month ago, that I was going to get and when I got it in I showed you the unboxing of this squid and you guys said you'd like to see a review for it and so I decided to get this done before the end of 2016. So here we are, even though a number of you guys uh, when I did my first CRKT review this year you said CRKT, yeah, not so much. But like with any other brand, there's some exceptions. And a lot of you commented that you like the squid or the idea of it, and you'd like to know more about it. And so here's the review of the Kershaw squid. It comes in this satin kind of stone wash, and you can get it in a black stone wash. It's uh, just a little bit too big to be called a wee knife. And uh, I'm finding it quite uh, fun to carry and so I'd like to tell you all about it, so stick around. All right, uh, first things first, before you get too concerned, yes, I cut my finger. Uh, just a gentle little slice in that direction right there. Uh, not with this knife, I was goofing off while watching Netflix last night. Silly, silly me. Okay, let's get on with this knife, the squid. The squid is a cute little knife. Ah, cute's the wrong word. It's a little too masculine for cute. It's a, it's a strong knife that comes in a small size. Squid is actually not a bad name for this. Um, a squid, you know, you get the picture of a squid in your mind and uh, you see it sort of, you know, the, it's swimming along in this direction and you've got some little tentacles coming out this way and it's swimming along. And it looks like a soft, delicate creature. It can't do that much. But if you get anywhere near that mouth, it's got a hard beak, uh, a really bony, hard structure that can destroy <laughs> and take apart some really, uh, you know, big things. And they're, they're pretty crazy critters. And there's some squid that come in all kinds of flashy spectacular colors and patterns and everything this guy's a little more subtle you can get them as i mentioned in the opening stone wash either the traditional stone wash or a black stone wash a guy named lucas burnley uh, a designer out of new mexico he is the designer of this knife um if you're looking it up it's uh, cr2490 is the model number and if you want the black wash, add a KS to the end of the model number, 2490KS. Um, you've got 8CR13 MOV steel on this blade, a nice hollow grind. We've got a blade that is about six centimeters of cutting edge. That's about two and a quarter inches. We've got a handle that's just about nine centimeters long. That's right around three and a half inches. Uh, the whole thing all together is about five and three quarter inches long, which is right around 14 and a half centimeters. So we've got a pretty decent sized knife here for dropping in your pocket, taking with you, EDCing, uh, and enjoying. It's built pretty solid, robust, frame lock is strong, uh, feels good in the hand, uh, very secure kind of feeling. Nice hollow grind, a flat section and a pretty good belly. Drop point with a you know a bit of a swedge for an accent there and to give it just a little bit of a look of lightness to it. Uh, and a little bit of a, you know, not quite a sharpener's toil, but a little bit of that so that when you go to sharpen your knife, it can, you can sharpen right to the end and it's going to look good. Uh, the designer, Lucas, did a pretty good job on this knife. I really like it. It's It's well thought out and everything works. You've got a lanyard hole that comes thanks to the backspacer. So the backspacer comes right back here. I believe that's a piece of aluminum and a little bit of a hole in it there. So that works out quite well. What do we have for washers in this knife? We have, I think it's brass on both sides. I, I didn't take it apart. I'm going to go double check that right now. Be patient. Wait. Calm down, everybody. It will be okay. 
reach over here i turn on my light see this light right there it's on <laughs> take a look we've got brass on both sides so yeah there you go brass on both sides of both washers I haven't adjusted the tension on the pivot screw, so it doesn't always flip open with the authority that I'd like to be able to do. C can I be honest with you guys right now? Just take a break for a second from this review. I really don't care that much for doing this with a knife. <laughs> you know what I mean? I really, really don't, you know. It's, it's just not something that's that big of a deal for me in the real world. In the real world, when I'm EDCing a knife, uh, I just do that, you know, I just open the blade. I don't, you know, try to show off and go, hey man, look how cool I am. <laughs> I, I don't know. Is that because I'm a grandpa? I don't know. Um, when I'm sitting in my basement playing with knives, of course, I'm flicking and goofing off all the time and I rather enjoy that. But, you know, just when I'm regularly carrying a knife, it's not that big a deal to me. Uh, and so I've not checked the tension for that, but the blade play is non-existent up and down, back and forth. And that's why I haven't adjusted that at all. It opens and closes smoothly and, you know, lockup is good and I don't mind. So here's a picture of the lockup on it. There we go. We're focused. So lockup is right at uh, the leading edge is right about halfway across the blade there right now. Oh, there you go. That shot, you can sort of see the washers there. It's a nice frame lock, great size. It's a little bit heavy, guys. Check this out. 3.5 grams. <laughs> Sorry, that'd be great, wouldn't it? 3.5 ounces, 99 grams. So we've got a knife that is, mine is anyways, just a hair above the specs on the uh, websites and on the manufacturer's site, but it's it's a good knife, um, and I got it for a good price. It's a budget knife that, uh, oh, before I get to the price, let's talk about this pocket clip a little bit more first. Uh, you can see it's a deep carry, but it's a pocket clip that, uh, you know, it doesn't have flush screws, so the screws do stick out a little ways, but there's enough room in here for your pants to rather easily ride all the way up so it sinks as deep as it can no problem at all with those screws the way they are. Uh, the pocket clip is also designed well enough right here and the tension that's in that spring is good enough that it goes very easily in and out of my jeans um, and some of my lighter pants as well. I've had no issues with it uh, moving around on my pocket, uh, coming loose, no chance of losing it or dropping it or anything like that due to a problem with the pocket clip. So the pocket clip is done really well, and it's you know proportionally the right size for the knife. They did a good job of it. Uh, so the lockup arm is good. Uh, the pocket clip also works as a protector to not overextend the uh, frame lock arm. You know everything looks good, feels good. Um, before I get into any cutting tests or anything, what would I change about this knife? Well, it's pretty heavy. I might uh, skeletonize, not skeletonize as in going through, but I might mill out a little bit on the inside of these of, of this frame, especially the show side, just to lighten up that side a little bit. Uh, and at the same time, I'm going to say the opposite kind of thing. <laughs> it's kind of strange. I would probably use the same um, 2CR13 steel that I used for the knife handle on this backspacer just so that it wouldn't stand out as a different color on the knife. I'd, I'd like it to blend in more. Instead, right now, this aluminum backspacer looks a little bit different. The other thing about this backspacer is the fit and the finish is, you know, it's just not up to par in my opinion. Look on the left side of that backspacer and you can see it's riding higher than the frame and look on the left side right there where my thumb is and it's deeper it's a small thing but hey 
There's a lot of other knife companies that make knives that cost less than this, that they do a much better job. Um, so come on, you can do this CRKT. You can get your Chinese companies to do better quality control. Um, because they can do better quality control, they've shown us with companies like San Renmu and Harns and Ganzo, and the list could go on and on. They know how to do good quality control, uh, like the Chinese made Spider Coast. You, you can get good quality control, and CRKT, you guys deserve it. You're a good company. You deserve great quality, great fit and finish. And this knife deserves good fit and finish as well. I like it. It's not a big problem, it's just a small thing right there. So that's, you know, main basics of this knife. How much does this little guy cost? The best price I can find right now is Knifeworks. You can get him for $17.95. It's the cheapest price I could find. Um, my fellow Canadians, if you want to buy in Canada, the cheapest price I could find is $30 and, uh, and a little bit of change from Warriors and Wonders. Uh, you can probably find it on... Amazon.ca for a little bit more than that. I forget exactly what the number is. Okay, let's see how well this thing works as far as cutting goes. Uh, we've got some strapping here. This is one inch strapping and just slides through that stuff. No problem at all. This isn't a big chunk of cardboard, but you can see it cuts cardboard quite cleanly. Um, if you need to cut into some plastic, it'll do that quite well. You can stab into plastic and cut hit a little bit heavier wire. You've seen this wire on different um, videos. It's pretty heavy wire from a game controller. It's got all kinds of shielding metal and stuff inside that wire. Cuts through that stuff just fine. And yet, even after all of that, it's still... Anyhow, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please click on like, please share with your friends, and please remember to always cut towards your chum and not your thumb.